Hey folks, I'm Chris Thornton, and making an origami water bomb like this is quick and easy. Let me show you how. To make my water bomb, I'm going to be starting with a normal piece of A4 paper here. But this is a problem for us because in origami, they traditionally use square paper rather than rectangular paper. So we need to make this into a square first. The easiest way to do that is take one corner here and fold it across the page and you're going towards that midpoint just there and get a nice 45 degree diagonal going across the page like this. There we go. Then you're going to take this overlapping bit, this flap at the top, and fold it down here. This is the bit which we're going to get rid of. So make sure that you get that really as closely as you can in line with that edge you just made. There we go. So now this whole section is a square. We don't need this bit. You could cut that off with a pair of scissors, but it's easier just to fold it in. Run your fingernails along it, fold it back again. There we go, and that should now be weak enough if we start tearing it to separate out all of its own accords. If we just give it a little bit of sideways force. And get rid of this bit now, and we're left with a square. And this fold here is actually one which is useful to us in this case. What I want you to do now is take the corner down here where that fold goes to, and you're going to bring it up across like that to the other one. So you should have two crossing diagonal folds running across your square of paper. Okay. Make sure that these are what we call valley folds because they go downwards like a valley. Make sure that they're like that because the next thing that you're going to need to do is flip your page over and then make an end-to-end -end fold across here. Just a second. There we go. So, valley fold there, and these are what we call mountain or ridge folds. And you should be able to bunch the whole thing up like this. Now, from this starting point, we are then well along our way. What you need to do is flatten this out. And then you're going to need to do just a few more operations, but you're going to need to repeat them each time. Uh, first, what you're going to do is take one of these, just one of them, so leave the other one flat there, and you're going to fold it in and down towards the bottom there. Then you're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Uh, you're going to mirror it, basically, and flip it over. Do the same on the next side. There we go. And the next side. Now, often in origami, you're going to want to take care and precision, but seeing as this is something that I'm going to fill full of water, I don't really care if it looks a little bit rough around the edges. That's fine. The next step that you need to do is this bit here. You're going to fold it in on itself towards the center like that. Same on the other side. In towards the center. Flip it over. Do it again here and again here. We're nearly done. The last thing you need to do is take these little bits here, fold them over this bit which you just folded in and back on themselves to make a little point like that so that you can tuck them in under there, underneath the bit that you just folded in. Let me show you that again a little bit closer. So this bit here, I'm going to fold over, back on itself and then tuck it in underneath there. And then repeat that for the other three. So over, back, and then you tuck it in. Oops, a little bit fiddly this bit. Probably the fiddliest part of the whole thing, but it's not too difficult. Then again, over, back, and tuck it in there. And last one, over, back, and tuck it in. There we go, and that's all our folding done. Now once you've completed all the folds, 
Uh, the final step is to inflate the thing. All you need to do is find the end with the hole and blow into it. And it should pop up quite quickly. You can make these all sorts of sizes and as a container they can be useful for storing lots of different things. Uh, so you could uh, store things like screws and nails in here or beads. But as I said, they can be used as a water bomb as well. In fact, that's how I first learned to make them. They do actually hold water. Let me show you. So this is just ordinary printer paper, the cheapest stuff that I could get from Staples. And yet, oh, not all of it went in the hole there. And yet, it will actually hold water. I hope that tutorial was useful to you. If it was, please leave a comment, like, share, or follow one of these links just here, or just here to see other videos, or click just here to subscribe. Thanks for watching.